What's up guys, what's up YouTube, what's up world, what's up IMGs, what's up medical students, what's up graduates, foreign medical graduates, Caribbean school graduates, wherever you're from, if you haven't gone to medical school, what's up? So this video is more of a rant versus a how-to video. So if, you, if you're if you interested in listening to my rant, you're welcome to do so. If you want how-to videos, I have other how-to videos which are gonna be linked down below. I have how to create your own program list. So if you've been thinking about that, trying to make sure that you have a good program list that you're applying to, instead of depending on other people's program lists, you can uh, find the link down below. If you're trying to write your personal statement, I have a, a video on how to start your personal statement and I have a video on how, on the things that will make your personal statement great. So I've done those things to make your burden a little bit easier as my goal with my channel is to help IMGs match. I'm trying to be a resource for you guys so that you have somebody to ask questions to, somebody that's been through the process from beginning to end that you have questions for. If you're confused, you don't know where to start, you don't know how to increase your chances of matching. I am here for you. I'm just gonna be talking about the different things that have gone on and are going to happen in the match of 2021, the COVID-19 match, if you, if you will. What's up guys? My name is Dr. Safo Asante. I'm the successful IMG. Successful because I matched and I'm here so that you can as well. So like I said in the introduction, this video is going to be different from the other videos that I have released so far. It's not going to have the usual structured approach. It's going to be a little bit more free flowing than my other videos because this is just going to be off the top of my head and I'm just going to share with you my thoughts on match 2021. Now this match is completely different from the other matches that we've had so far. When I was applying in 2017, we submitted our vacations on September 15th. So you had everything prepared and you were just waiting, waiting to pounce on the submit button from the moment that you could. And because so many people were doing the exact same thing. It was slow being able to submit your application the moment it opened up for some people because everybody's always overloading the system because we're all doing the exact same thing. So we would send an application September 15th, uh, try to be early so that we are one of the first few people that uh, programs would take a look at. And then MSPEs, would be released on October 1st. So if you've applied before, you know this. Now, some programs, if they didn't care too much about the MSPEs, at least initially, they could offer out interviews to specific people that met their criteria early, before October 1st, before MSP letters went out. But things have changed now, application, already opened up September 1st. So you could submit your application September 1st. But programs are not able to look at your application at all until October 21st. This is to provide some accommodation for the pandemic, the, the effects of the pandemic on the different programs, on the testing that we have to do, and on the applicants as a whole. With this, you get a little bit more time to get your application in, to wait, and for IMGs, to wait for the ECFMG certification to go through, to get your token, to get the things that you need to do. One of the things that makes it difficult now is you don't get a permanent ECFMG certificate. And that's because we're not doing the step two CS at the moment. 
people are doing the OET as a substitute for the step two CS. Now the OET is not testing your clinical skills. And as such, we are seeing it for what it is, a substitute. And ECFMG is going to provide you a temporary ECFMG certificate, which means that it's temporary only if you don't match. If you match into residency program and you start the residency program, that ECFMG certificate becomes permanent. Now, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, will residency programs accept a temporary ECFMG certificate? And that I am not sure of. These are all my thoughts. And these, this is basically how I would approach it if I was a program. So this is not speaking for anybody else other than myself. And these are my thoughts. Take, take it with a grain of salt and make of it what you will. Okay. Now, if I was a program and I had the option of picking people that had the ECFMG certificate, which was permanent, ECFMG certificate, which was temporary, which one would I pick? Considering the fact that I want new graduates, I want graduates that have graduates that have exposure to the US system, I would more than likely select people that have um, temporary ECFMG certificates that go to the schools that provide rotations in the US. So in my opinion, I think Caribbean schools usually do pretty well. They might do a lot better this time around. The ones that might have to work a little harder. If their scores are not great, if their scores are great, I think that might override a lot of stuff. But if the scores are not that great, I would think that people that have the permanent ECFMG certificates would be preferred and looked at. Because for programs, it's very, very important for them to have residents that can hit the ground running the moment they start. And part of the way that they look at they they figured it out is they use the step to CS, because the step to CS tests your clinical skills. If you don't have a test that tests your clinical skills and shows them that you can do it, they would end up relying on prior proof that you have the clinical skills. Now the match, you're not allowed to go in to different hospitals because they're trying to protect themselves and they're trying to protect you. So instead of having interviews and dinners and, um, and tours of the hospital, everything is gonna be done online. So this brings, brings about some challenges at least in my opinion. The interview day is not just for the program to get to know you. By being stressed about the interview season and the thought of matching, we kind of forget that interview day is not only for programs, it's also for us to get to know the programs, for us to pick the programs that we like based on what we notice when we go to these programs. The residents that are there, how they interact with each other, how the faculty seem to interact with themselves, how the faculty seem to interact with the residents, and uh, like what kind of mood you feel that the residents are under. Like for me, for instance, when I went on one of my interviews, I could just feel like the weight of heaviness on residents in a particular program. And I just knew that I didn't want to go to that program, right? And then there was another there was another interview where speaking to some of the residents, I could just tell that, no, the residents weren't bad, the residents were good. But um, 
the description of the environment that they were living in, not the residency program, but like the place, the neighborhood, I just knew I didn't want to be there, right? So you kind of get, you kind of miss those things because you can't be at the program itself. So programs are going to be doing everything virtually. Um, what, what can we do about it? Not really much. You have to just try to do the best you can with what you have. So um, you have to prepare yourself for your virtual interviews. I made a video of how to um, make sure that your interviews will go well. Uh, I'm going to put the link down below, right? It's just giving you tips on little, little things that you can do to make sure the interview goes well. So COVID-19 has just wrecked the havoc on our lives. And it's changed a lot of things with the match. How it's gonna really pan out, I'm not 100% sure, but I shared with you my thoughts, what I think, what I, me, I think, and not necessarily what anybody told me. So like I said, take what I said with a grain of salt, but just keep it in your mind and use it as you feel will help. Now, uh, I still have some slots available, a few slots available for my mentorship program. My mentorship program is for people that have applied once, didn't make it, applied twice, didn't make it, and they feel like they're just not good enough. Uh, usually it just takes a certain tweak to get them on the right path for some people. Okay, this is not saying for everybody. For some people, you don't know what to tweak because you don't know exactly what they want and how to do it. Um, so the mentorship program is for you. I will guide you. Um, if I feel that you have a chance, I will guide you and try to help you match. I also have some slots available for my interview program, um, my interview preparation program. And this interview preparation program is for those of you that think that you need the extra hand in doing well in your interviews. And I'll be quite frank with you, when I was a resident and people were coming in to do the interviews, most of them sucked, right? So if you're very good at interviews, you can separate yourself from a lot of people. And I think that's very important. So if you feel like you want my help in preparing yourself for interviews, to, uh, Contact me. My email address is down below. My my Instagram account is also down below, and I'm also going to put my Twitter account down below. So you can contact me. You can contact me any way that you want. Okay. Other than that, guys, um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so that I can uh, beat the YouTube algorithm, and you can be the first people to see the video. When I release them, like I said, I release videos every Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, I'll see you next Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Dr. Safwa Sante, out.